Good day. This series of videos describes Niagara's Welland Canal, a fun place to watch ships up close. In this part, I introduce the canal and its benefits, and I touch on industry and transportation and cargoes. So let's get started. A canal is a water pathway made by people. Canals are not new. Ancient civilizations going back to Sumeria used canals, mostly for irrigation, but also for maritime transport. Today, there are few working ship canals around the world. Their purpose is to make transport cheaper and so facilitate commerce. The most important are the Suez Canal and the Panama Canal. The Welland Canal is located here in the Niagara region in Ontario, Canada. The canal benefits the Great Lakes region and lands to the west in both Canada and the USA, boosting the farming and mining industries and the economies of nearby cities. The canal is 27 miles from end to end between Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. Lake Erie is higher than Lake Ontario by 109 yards, so the canal also raises or lowers ships along the way. To deal with the height differential, the Welland Canal has the twin flight locks, an engineering wonder of the world. Operating since 1932, the current Welland Canal is actually the fourth in a series of canals, the first of which opened in 1829, that's almost 200 years ago. To distinguish it from the historical canals, people may call it the fourth Welland Canal, or perhaps the Welland Ship Canal. The canal divides neatly into two portions, with Lock 7 the dividing point. The north portion of the canal, in St. Catharines and Thorold, is 9 miles long and has 7 locks, each with a vertical lift of 15 yards. The south portion of the canal, including part of Thorold and also including Welland and Port Coburn, is 18 miles long and is flat, with just one lock, Lock 8, at the south end. It takes each ship roughly eight hours to travel in the end. The canal is open for nine and a half months of the year for shipping. During two and a half months each winter, ice in Lake Erie prevents ship traffic and so the canal is closed. During the winter closure, some sections north of Lock 7 may be drained of water for meetings. But south of Lock 7, the water flows all year. Canada invested massive resources to build the Welland Canal. Let's go through the benefits the canal provides. The canal's main purpose is to permit cargo ships to move between Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. The canal is one link in a system that permits ship access between all the Great Lakes and the Atlantic Ocean. Most ships that use the canal are just passing through on their way to distant destinations. But a few load or unload at local wharves and docks along the canal to benefit local businesses. Besides cargo, there are other ships, service ships, and a small number of cruise ships, sailing ships, and military vessels. Private pleasure boats can pay a fee to transit the canal end to end. Besides shipping, the canal provides other benefits. Canal water is used to generate electric power for 12 months of the year. Ontario Power Generation, controlled by the Ontario government, operates the Deque power stations whose source of water is Lake Erie via the canal. Seaway management operates its own electric grid to power all the lighting and the motors for locks and bridges. There are backup generators for each lock and bridge. Niagara Region uses canal water to provide drinking water for many cities near the canal. Some private industries draw canal water for their use. During the growing season, Niagara Region provides canal water to irrigate farmland and greenhouses east of Lock 2. Finally, recreation counts as a benefit. There's ship watching at Lock 3 and most other locks. At many other locations, there are parking lots to view ships and lock operations up close. A walking slash biking path goes the length of 
the canal on the west side. Other trails also follow historic routes of the former Third Canal and the Second Canal. There are recreational activities in water-filled sections of old canals, including three rowing courses and a scuba park. Now that I said that, I want to give my first safety note. Except for the fee-paying pleasure craft that I mentioned, there is no recreation permitted on the working canal or its ponds. There's no boating, no swimming, no fishing, no skating. The canal is managed by a Canadian federally owned company called the St. Lawrence Seaway Management Corporation, SLSMC. I call them Seaway Management for the rest of this video. Seaway Management does not operate on a for-profit basis. Fees paid by commercial ships transiting the canal are only just enough to pay for costs to operate the canal, including the winter maintenance. Funding for major improvement projects is provided by the Canadian government, for example, the vacuum mooring devices. Well, why are these ships going back and forth? I want to spend five minutes on industry and transportation to provide a little context for shipping. Industry is the group of businesses that work together to make things for us, the consumers. For example, someone made the bread that I get at the store. The process went something like this. Someone grows wheat on a farm. The wheat is harvested, producing wheat seeds. The wheat seeds are ground into flour. The flour is baked into bread. And then someone trucks it to my store. Uh, here's a different example. In the steel industry, the raw materials are iron ore and coal. Of course, I'm leaving lots of things out on purpose. The coal is baked in a special oven to make coke. So the iron ore and coke are put in a smelter and out comes pig iron. And the pig iron is used in further processing and eventually makes the things we want out of steel and iron. So let me generalize things. Primary industries harvest raw materials from the environment. Here's a list of primary industries. The raw materials feed into manufacturers, which can feed intermediate products into other manufacturers. Each step in the process adds cost, so the value of stuff increases as it flows from left to right. These industries, the farm, the flour mill, and the bakery, are far apart. Transportation is the business of moving things to where they are needed. Let's break down the journey of the wheat seeds. First, on a farm, after the wheat seeds are harvested, they are stored in a silo until the market price is favorable. The wheat is trucked from the farm 10 miles to the grain elevators at the railway station. The wheat then travels by rail 1,000 miles to the grain elevators at Thunder Bay. A big laker then takes it another 1,000 miles to complete the journey to the flour mill. In this example, trucks, rail, and ships were all used. And because vehicles don't wait for each other, storage is required at the start and end of each leg of the journey. Businesses choose the cheapest form of transport to minimize the cost added to the final product. Typically, the choice is between ships, rail, and trucks. For cargo going overseas, ships are the only option. Where ships compete with trucks and rail, ships are economical for long distances with dry bulk cargoes, large cargoes of a single cheap item, like raw materials. A big laker carries as much wheat as 300 rail cars or 900 trucks. Trucks are the most flexible and carry small, high-value loads. Rail is the middle option. It is often used when ships cannot be used for bulk cargoes. Cargoes! Along the Welland Canal, the most frequent cargoes are grains, such as wheat, corn, soybeans, and canola. Mine products, iron ore, as taconite pellets, coal, salt, stone, gravel, and gypsum. Intermediate products, there are so many. Iron, steel, coke, cement, 
cement clinker, cane sugar. Cane sugar comes by ship from sugar growing areas such as Brazil and Barbados. It is used to make white sugar and brown sugar. A cement clinker is made by baking limestone and it is the active ingredient in concrete. Oil products such as fuel oil, gasoline, and diesel. Chemicals in liquid form. There are a few shipping containers. Looking back to the list of six primary industries, the only one not represented is fishing. Dry bulk cargoes are big on the lakes. And dry bulk cargoes, such as salt and coal, are solids in chunks or grains that they can move with conveyor belts and funnels and often store outside in pointy heaps. Road salt stays outside. They have big tarpaulins on it to keep it dry. That's all I've got. Comments are welcome. Check out the other videos. Thanks for your time and I'll see you by the canal.